It's Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, YK. Hello. Birthday Morning. girl. Yes, it was my birthday. <laughs> And I was only 59. <laughs> you know, a lot of people were saying 60. Yeah. But I was 59, and I wish I was 60, because she, I wouldn't have spent money. No, we are locking down Lagos State for your 60. I would have like just it. been the happiest 60-year-old <laughs> in the... No, ah, like, like, quiet, like, no like, money spent. Uh, hey. Okay, you spend this money. I would <laughs> have been the happiest We person. are buying a Shelby for your 60. <laughs> just get ready. I want to say thank you. And happy birthday to your twins. I even yeah, forgot to call yesterday. Yes, I had yes, 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 yes. You know? <laughs> we had a party yesterday. Ah. Hey. Yeah, the, 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 was it a Zoom party? No, it was actually a portable. I mean, my household already we were about nine, but we were 10. But Mama Brown is in the US, so we are nine mm. in the house. Then my mom came from Bagada. I'm the driver, that's 11 of us. We had a and the kids actually had fun. We bought them gifts, mm. cake, we danced, we partied, we sang. It was more intimate. And you that's think to yourself, they that's be. how bad they should be. Yeah. All this are you, oh, and Bahol, and yeah. It's just excessive. Mm, because I mean, the kids actually had fun. My partner you know? took me to a private beach. Yes. And there were about another person that had his birthday. Yes. It was just very few, six of us, and we had fun. And we, we, the drink went round. Because we were not catering to a lot of people. <laughs> well, I can't, so I was it. over. Why can't you drunk? We're drunk. Ah! Mm. You're asking me again. Why can't 59 is your Ah! <laughs> you're asking me again. <laughs> During COVID one night. Hey! You're hungry. I see. Whoa. <laughs> ah! I see yesterday. Then when my partner asked me to do something, I was like, ah! You know, ah! I still. You know, I, I'm still doing birthday. He said, come on, get up, get up. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> well, I just want to thank everybody, yeah, so many yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. My, my brother was the first that called me, Femi. He called me at midnight. Am I the first to call you? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you woke me up at <laughs> <laughs> And then the, my other brother sent me a cake. It was just, yeah. I was just, I felt very loved mm, and appreciated. Yes, you are loved, absolutely. Good that's to have you back on the show. Hi, Nima. I'm good, though. I'm just, you know, smiling inside my mind because I'm going to rub it in with my husband today that Morales kids had a private birthday party and it was a birthday party. And that's how I do my, bed, my children's birthday. I'll cook the food and sit there. And see, you're just stingy. He doesn't get it. Because I, I just feel everybody coming there are coming to eat, but I would yeah. really love and appreciate it. took pictures. Too. You and be you thinking see, that uh, me, daddy, you know, daddy and the children, daddy mm. and one child, mm. daddy and the other child. You know, mm. they all we just dramatize something that doesn't need drama. <laughs> mm. grandma, you know, it was just fun. It's for you to show them. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, the crowd. Well, it's fun. just like in my house, you know, like believe if we are going to have a party, we don't need to call an outsider. At all. <laughs> because well, your house is huge. <laughs> <laughs> your house is a party. You know of people. <laughs> ah, hey, mm. That is how I went to go and do race. This is my bit to lose weight. I went to go and do race with young, young boys. Made and his, <laughs> his guy. Hey, well, if you see the way I fell down, Yakata, oh, I sprained. Okay. This is my shoe. I'm wearing it with power new. I sprained my because ankle. Because you exercise, I reach the portion that you can be running. <laughs> you just ah, feel well, that you're stronger. If you see the way Yakata me, I fell. Oh, <laughs> oh it's Tuesday. Mm. We have so much to cover today. Uh, as I said, it's our anniversary week. Uh, this whole week, we are planning speaking to a few governors, but you know, some will, uh, some would change their minds. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. so our guest today actually changed his mind. Uh, but either way, we'll try to bring others soon. So we're going to have a different topic. But this week, we're going to be interviewing and discussing with as many governors as possible. The idea is, it's our own anniversary. We, we, we started your view, May 29th. Democracy Day. Democracy Day, which was quite significant. When is May 29th again? It's Friday. Friday. It's Friday. Ah, and I'm on the show yeah. that day. Ah, yeah. so, are we going to have cake? <laughs> 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 of course we'll have cake. Let's do our own Zoom party right. Right. on your view. We'll see. we'll see how we can do that. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Let's start with uh, the nation. WHO suspends COVID-19 chloroquine treatment trial. INEC case e-voting from 2021. GDP grew by 1.87% in Q1, says NBS. Lagos federal government working on schools reopening. Igalo heads for Man U exit this week. Permanent deal shaky. And picture here of a rainstorm destroys school's roof, 30 houses in Lagos. That rain was crazy. Mm. That rain was crazy. I can't, I can't believe this. This is the damage done to school. It's really, really bad. But let's take the major headline, WHO. 
Yeah, what yes. are they saying? So they, okay, go on. Okay. The WHO have, um, based on the report by Lancet Group, yes, have you know um, expressed worry about the use of COVID um, uh, of hydroxychloroquine on COVID and chloroquine on COVID patients. They say that the, based on the observation over time that this has resulted in more people dying from. COVID. So they, of course, want to review it. I remember when WHO said they were, at, no, Trump had said that it was the drug they were using and everybody just queued up behind him. I wanted to hear our own people say, no, this is what we think differently. I don't want us to always follow what the Yubo people say, but unfortunately, we queued behind them as well. And now, we might have to listen we to... Don't, we don't know that, for sure, because according to Lancet, as you said, uh, over 400 hospitals in 35 countries we participated in this, and 17 countries actually also en enrolled in this. in this. And they got about 3,500 patients in general just to test it. And what they discovered is that many of them actually, they, there was more mortality yes. as a test. However, they're not saying that, they're also saying that um, some had, uh, there was a word, autoimmune disease of malaria. So some those who had that, auto, they, they had that, they had already developed immunity as a treatment of malaria. So it's not a full 100%, we're not sure yet, but the idea is that for now it's been suspended. I'm a bit worried because the, the, I, um, and I'm happy that we're speaking with the DG today and to see exactly if we should be following WHO then, or should we just follow we're our own following When they said this thing then, I went and chattered. Yeah, the people that cleared the show. Yes, now. I you chattered it. You and the rest of Legosians. I threw, I threw all of them away about a week or two ago. Yeah. Because I, I'm not even going to take them. Thrown them we just wanted to have them with you. Just in you know, case. I just wanted to have them. But, no, you know, normally I don't even take drugs like that. Right. I don't. So uh, okay, I let's I move on. Uh, INEC, okay, okay. I'll take that in a different paper. Moving on to the punch. Federal government screening 19 Nigerian firms for COVID-19 drugs production. Called kingpin another kill during Lagos supremacy clash. My wife lied that I defiled my daughter. Says Undo Welder. Police nab Undo cemetery workers with human heads. Can six talks with Ogun over churches mosque reopening. INEC plans to start ele electronic voting in 2021. And federal government evacuates 69 stranded trafficked Nigerians from Lebanon. Okay, which stories are we taking in? Let me take the Undo one first. Right, you you ahead, can take the, let me take the Undo one first because mm -hmm. that one was very interesting. The, the, these four, four guys, um, ranging from 69 to 40, were caught at the um, cemetery with four heads. What had happened was this uh, family had just buried their own mm. person. Right. So they went to go and make sure that the place was cemented and everything. And they just met them with four heads that Jesus they had Christ. just recently. So they were in their own... It's like a uh, To start to exhume yeah. their own mm. dead body. When they say, ah, ah, what are you doing there? That's how they just met them. Wait. Hey! Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And they quickly called the police. Oh, and no. there four fresh severed heads. Jesus Christ. Of and they said that it's something that they've been doing, so they're going to look into the matter. Ah. And okay, let's have uh, that. That was yeah, horrific. That was gruesome. Yes. I don't have human interest stories. The power story. Ten of our power plants idle. Okay. And because of that, you know, our megawatts have dropped from 3,007 to 2,006 again. Right. It's, on, it's in the punch major here. Yeah, I've seen it. So um, uh, the reason is saying that the shutdown of all the 10 power plants is due to um, low gas, uh, gas constraint, low loads, and uh, low uh, demand, low load demand by distribution company, by discos. I am aware that discos are complaining of um, the, um, transformers breaking down because of overloading. So maybe that has, that has informed why they are you know, not demanding as much to distribute. And that has affected our, our production. This is a failure of system over time. Anytime right. I read about power, I just keep finding how you failed several years ago and nobody did anything constructive to change it. Right. But now it's catching up with us fast. I think, I don't know whether within COVID we can still find a way to invest in mm. power Sincerely invest, as in truly, truly, deliberately. All right, invest. I was going to take a, a year and a year at it again. Which one? The uh, court. Okay, the go ahead. Right yeah, on. the Aye guy, he was driving on Oshoki Road. He was, his car was hit. He got out to see who hit me. They came out with machetes. They started beating him and machete, um, you know, stabbing him with the machetes. And then he ran into a church. They followed him there and they killed him. Now, the Aye. Now retaliated by killing another. Uh, you guy. Are you guy? Uh, mm. Okay, and the, the, the police arrested them. Police harried. They you haven't arrested them yet. They are still on the run. Mm. Moving on now to Vanguard. 
Edo governorship, Oshomoli Obaseki's men in fresh tussle over primaries and even bother reading that story. Executive order withhold legislature judiciary cash, lose allocations federal government warns. Lagos government may reopen schools if, according to commissioner, additional U.S. call for probe plot to destabilize Africa Development Bank says Bank's Ethics Committee, how to res rescue Nigeria from deep economic recession. Okay, did you take the... Yes, so the executive order. So yesterday we took that executive order that, you know, that now our, our legislature and our judiciary across all states will become truly independent because of this executive order that has been passed by the Senate as well and signed into law by the President. And the Attorney General of the Federation at, at addressing press yesterday warned state governors who would attempt to hold back this allocation that when you attempt to owe this money, you will lose your allocation and this money will start to be deducted from source before they pay you your allocation subsequently. So right. don't even try it. That's the consequence of trying to hold it back. So that we'll have I was going to take two stories here. Um, Lagos State might reopen schools and the idea, they're not reopening, it's important that we clear the air. They are saying they are studying the pandemic, they're working with the federal government to see even when the coast is clear. So they are on standby and once they do agree to reopen schools, they're going to give the schools a couple that of weeks then to be able to get themselves together before then coming to starting. But definitely they are looking at the options and seeing what is possible. I wonder, the term is almost over. Right. What yeah. would happen? No, this one has passed. So we'll they are definitely seeing what it is. And this was an interesting story, additional, additional story. Um, he's been, <clears throat> um, there's an allegation against him. So that's um, the, African who, the president of who? You have president to, of African, African, African Development um, Bank. Uh, African, yeah, African yes. Development so Bank. He's, he, and he has been cleared by the Ethics Committee that all charges against him are false and there was nothing and all 55 countries in Africa have supported and applauded the work he's done in the last five years. However, U.S. is adamant, insisting, insisting that, they say, <laughs> that he's, um, he's fraudulent and there are charges against him. So he's saying that it's, uh, um, it's one of it's their right. colonial, uh, con colonial. colonial agenda uh, and that they, they, they're not happy the fact that they seem to be rivaling the World Bank yes. and people are they're becoming more independent of World Bank. Yes. So that's really what the battle is about. But he, as a person, has been exonerated by his um, those who are in his By the people who matter. By the people who yeah, they should like face you know. their we are sovereign. <laughs> ah, they should face their side. That's sovereign. Yeah, sovereign. Ah. Moving on to the Because the guy, even when he was um, agricultural minister, he did, he did excellently. You know, so I don't Sorry know. Ah. Moving on to Tribune. INEC releases 10 COVID-19 rules for next election. How children are returning to schools in Côte d'Ivoire. Why Nigeria is at risk of infectious disease outbreaks. Um, let's find this. Leaking of official documents. Embarrassing federal government says head of service. And crisis looms as crude oil prices climb. Okay. So major headline. INEC, this Tribune report vexed me a bit because they said INEC has released 10 guidelines for COVID-19 for elections. And I read through the story and it only insinuated that it borders around health and how um, and COVID. Yeah, this no is the ten. I, I was waiting for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have been monitoring this thing by for the past few months that elections will go ahead. They mm. said they will release guidelines. Now you're saying that the guidelines will be, have been released. We want to see the guidelines because we don't understand. We, we can't uh, because, fathom how you uh, plan what to have they elections. Said is, what they said is no, uh, you can't come and vote without mask. That is, that is NCDC guideline. It's well, well, essential. Let's, the, 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 what's, what are their names? The, um, the people that are collecting your votes must wear protective yeah. gear. should have given us a break. And then when, the you, when you get to, they said when you get to the um, polling unit, polling unit, you must remove your mask so they can identify if it is you that is on anyway, the Anyway, in a related story, card. YK, in a related story, INEC is saying that by 2022, I think, so 2021, one, one will begin to use electronic voting. Imagine. And that the reason they are, they are also identifying the fact that going forward, the world is going electronic, yeah. digital. We can't continue to do the CVR that we've been doing for so many if years. They had, if, if only they had yeah, passed that our electoral amendment. That time that we're telling them. But well, my worry is that they need a constitutional amendment, correct? To do that. They can't just do that independently of the constitution. But he, he was done and the electoral law was sent independently of the constitution. But he, he was done and the electoral law was sent back. It was suggested in Saraki's time as well, debate and all that they said it wasn't right. has come now and yeah. everybody's saying yeah. everything is not right. Now, electoral, <laughs> digital voting, mm. they cannot... Uh, they cannot uh, it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, final paper, Daily Trust, self-medication worsening our problem, says patients. Picture here of the Amajarai uh, children sent to Kaduna, I think from Kano State, I believe. Mm. Look, at, look at them, really nice looking pupils here. Um, Nigeria's economy records 1.87 growth in Q1, says NBS. How Gambari is faring in Nassau Rock, I would have loved to read that story. 
uh, if voting starts 2021, says INEC, and the magic controversy of Kogi's COVID-19 wonder app. Okay, we didn't read the literature today. I wish I read the literature because I want. I'm really interested in Kogi's. This is their COVID-19 app. Remember, the governor said it. Uh -huh. And they have one app that will help you to know if you have COVID-19. This is not a question that the general question that the that, uh, CDC, CDC app is, app is asking. Okay, we have to run, unfortunately. Did you take this um, um, the civil service story? No, I did not take the, that story. The, the one about uh, the leaked memo. So, uh -huh. because I didn't read it, I uh, wanted to read it. What's her name? I saw the head of the civil service had, had um, issued a warning that if people leaking out memos from the civil service will be punished for doing that. And the memo that she sent for that purpose who was leaked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's very embarrassing. And, uh, you know... <laughs> it's really sad. Very sad. Unfortunately, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we discuss mental health. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So, as the coronavirus pandemic rapidly sweeps across the world, it's in inducing considerable degree of fear, worry, and concern as a result of salary slash, job loss, business closing down, and many of our health workers. It's also causing mental illness for many health and other health issues for those working in the health sector. Joining us to discuss more on this is an anti-depression and suicide advocate, Mr. Emmanuel Amadou. Good morning, are you there, Emmanuel? Good morning, sir, are you there? Yes, good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good to have you on the show. Right, yes, so, thank you. It's a pleasure. as you know, the pandemic obviously is a, a source of worry for many. Uh, I particularly have a family member who is a health worker and every single day she comes home um, from the moment she enters, she's quarantined. Her family, they've, they've practically almost washed her. She doesn't touch anything from the gate. They open the gates for her till she enters the bathroom, wash up and everything. So this itself causes a lot of um, apprehension with family. They're worried about the possibility that she might uh, be affected. How can families help to have a proper mental balance during this period, especially if you have loved ones who are uh, at health risk, who are um, older, and who are in the medical service? How do you, how do we handle this, their, their mental wellness at this time? Hello? Are, they, are you there, yes. sir? Hello. Did you hear what, what I, I said? I could barely hear you, please. Okay. What we're saying that the pandemic obviously has caused quite a lot of families, a lot of mental imbalance. How okay. do we begin to um, help our loved ones who are going through a lot of mental breakdown at this time? Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, the the first thing to do, you know, considering this um, the impact of this pandemic, is um, to have this um, what is it called the emotional intelligence. You know, as families, as uh, individuals, you know, there's need for everyone to understand one's emotions and understand other people's emotions too understand how people feel you know it is supposed to be a time where people check on other persons you don't just uh, you know this period of time you know a lot of persons going through terrible situations some job loss as you said earlier and some salary slash some different uh, categories of uh, problems you know what is important this period is to check on one another you know and for one who is ex exhibiting or falls into this category, maybe the person has suffered job loss, you know, it is very important that such person, you know, uh, try to look inward and uh, make a kind of a look inward to see what other um, kind of skill or, or passion, what they have passion for, then they work towards that. And then they should, because it will be very frustrating, you know, it's a very frustrating experience losing one's job and you know, considering responsibilities around and all that. So it is very important to you, those persons, you know, talk to people who can help, like uh, trusted persons, like their family members who they trust, or if they discover these uh, kind of thing is hampering their health, especially mm -hmm. the mental health, there's need for them to reach out right, to Mr. professionals. Ma okay. All Mr. Right. Amadou, uh, you know, this, this could have been possible prior to COVID. Now we... 
because you know we are almost very communal as Africans, but now COVID has made everybody you know mind their business. You have to sit in your house. So if your family member was going through a hard time, if he doesn't talk to you, it will be almost impossible to know. What can the person himself or herself, the person going through a depression or a hard time do, you know, to help themselves out? Are there um, things they can personally listen to, uh, materials that they can access easily, that, you know, that can help them through this um, hard time? Okay. Um, thank you for that question. For individuals going through, you know, um, this pandemic, uh, you know, it's a natural thing. Like, it's something everyone is going through right now. But for persons who this pandemic is having effect on their mental health, you know, and maybe they've, they've, uh, they are victims of uh, job loss, it is a time to, for them to get in touch with things they like doing, things they have passion for, either to, to be reading, like, people, like those persons can engage themselves in reading, in good music, maybe this, the kind of song they like to hear, and indulge in maybe watching movies, and there are a whole lot of you know, activities they can, they can, you know, uh, surround themselves with. And it's also very important that they, they, you know, they, they, they take themselves off from the media, like getting into um, the newspaper, like those the events, you know, being reported. They just have to, you know, stay off. Of them. I gave an example okay. earlier, which you probably didn't hear. I, I have a family friend who's a health worker, and people don't understand the enormous amount of emotion she goes through every single day as a doctor. So she comes into her neighborhood, to her, into, her, into her family, and from the gate up until she enters the bathroom, she can't touch anything. The entire, all the neighbors see her as, um, as someone they have as to run away from. <laughs> Sorry? As a carrier. As a carrier. They so see her as a carrier just because she's a health worker. Now, we don't know the emotional drain that gives that person because constantly everybody's looking at you. We see abroad where they celebrate their health workers. They come home, neighborhood come out, clap for them, sing for them. They f those ones feel happy and joyful that, okay, I am doing something for humanity. But here in Nigeria, health workers are not celebrated. They are saying, like, whoa, whoa, please don't go there. That woman, that's so not there. She is, you know? <laughs> so that in itself affects the person as a human being. And we're not thinking of that. So what can we do to help that health worker that goes home every day feeling like a carrier? How can, what can we do to encourage people like that at this time? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. One thing we can do to, uh, thank you for the question. One thing we can do to help the health workers because it is obvious that you know, they are the ones facing the dangers, like they are out there and rescuing people. They, they are attending to people, they are at risk. So one thing we can do is to show them love. You know, we, we, we care about them. We shouldn't, even like some of the persons that have uh, contacted the virus, it, it's, it's not an avenue to stigmatize them or to, you know, keep them away because they are actually sacrificing their lives for humanity. So it is very important as Nigerians that we, we draw them closer, like we, we are close to them, we show them the necessary love and care Right. So, yeah, um, thank that's you. what I'll, I'll say concerning that. All right, that. thank you so, so much. Mike. Yeah, it's important that we draw them closer, but we will all be afraid. You have to be honest that we'll be afraid. Yes, definitely. definitely. Uh -huh. So, it's the advice to the, those of us that are afraid now that you are, how do we draw them closer? <laughs> draw them closer. Okay. That, that's one. And then you have not really addressed the people who are actually depressed, yes. who were depressed before COVID. 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 Yes. You have not addressed okay. those ones. Okay. You know, because, you know, uh, depression is an illness. Some people had it yes. before. But COVID compounded it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> if I was depressed before, I will, I will be in double depressed. Hey, double. triple. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, for, for, for those that uh, had depression before, the depression symptoms before and before the pandemic, because uh, currently the, the, the problem we know will have um, multiplied because of the advent of you know, this pandemic, because a whole lot of persons are indoor and you know, things, they, you know, those persons do before, like people who are scared and you know, anxious, depressed and kind of, so these are things like it gets to compound. So, and it, it is an opportunity um, where they can actually reach out to professionals like, 
uh, professional bodies or, or psychologists, right. you know, to, to let them know Mr. what they are going through. Mr. Madu. Okay. Okay, yeah. Mr. Madu, I would like to know what informed your advocacy for, you know, for depression and um, suicide. Uh, were you a victim? Have you suffered it directly or indirectly in the past? Yes, I am I, a victim. I'm a victim. Actually, it's a very serious story. Uh, my story went viral recently, you know, on how I wrote O level exams 17 times. You know, before I secured admission into the university, right, and uh, it was a very terrible experience. Which, along the line, I was depressed. I had thought of suicide, you know, but despite all that, I I braced up and I I had hope, although it wasn't easy. So it all started while I was very young. Were you just so hopeful? Did you take treatment? Were you put on antidepressants? What exactly was your process? Okay, no, I, okay, it didn't get to that extent. It didn't get to that extent of taking antidepressants and all that. But I, I was close to people. People, I knew they, were, they, they could help me. You know, because, you know, simply, people don't get to understand you. Like, no matter what you're going through, even if you tell, try to let them know, this is what I'm facing, this is the challenge and all that. Sometimes they also, which do not um, eventually help you out of whatever situation you're facing. So that was what I faced, because then I suffered you know, failures and all that, although it wasn't really my cause. It, I wasn't really the cause of all that, because I came from a book, uh, broken home, which you know, eventually led to a lot of setbacks. Right. You know, I, I went through several schools, 16 primary schools. You know, due to the family, uh, family crisis, I was being changed from one school to another. I went through 14 secondary schools. Hmm. You know, Within short intervals, I was being changed from one school to another. Then, you know, making it difficult for me to to get into uh, the university early. So I, I eventually, you know, took the O level exams. I was right. failing and failing and failing. I wrote the O level exams, 17 O level right. exams, in five years before I could, you know. Uh, again, admission and today, you know, it's mm. a success story. For Fantastic. Them. We'll definitely, that, we'll definitely okay. like to bring you back at some point to share your story because I, I think a lot of people can learn from your experience. But thank you very much for joining us this morning. We appreciate you. We'll be speaking with an anti-depression and suicide advocate, Mr. Emmanuel Amadou. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Right, thanks for staying with us. So we saw a report that caught our attention and uh, it's important we bring some of these stories to you. A student who refused to go home for the coronavirus lockdown died in her boyfriend's house after unsafe abortion. Now th this didn't happen in Nigeria, but it was important that we discuss it because it's somewhat related to the story we took last week about the young lady who had killed her child. And it's important we bring these kinds of stories to the fore because lots of parents have made have um, built a relationship around their children such that they don't come forward to you when there's a problem. And for a girl to opt to stay at her boyfriend's house instead of going home um, during the lockdown is in itself a problem. And then deciding to go on an abortion. But according to the story, the young man actually was trying to get her to the hospital, but he didn't have enough money. So obviously, you're dating somebody, and both of you obviously are under, well, she's 20 years old. I wouldn't say they're underage. But the point is that a lot of parents and family are in this situation where children make mistakes and the children are not comfortable coming forward. YK, we're going to just take this for a few minutes. What are your thoughts on this kind of, when you hear this kind of stories, what happened, what comes to mind? I think when you have a problem, the first thing you have to do is approach your parents. Now, this, parents too have to be more open because there are a lot of parents that you will be so scared, you will not be able to tell. I had parents that I could discuss with when I, I by the time I realized that, look, I, if I couldn't go to my mother, I would go to my father. If I couldn't go to my father, I would go to my mother. So you have to have one parent. At least. At least or, or an adult or somebody that you yeah, trust. Yeah, that you can confide in or talk to. So you don't take these life-threatening de decisions on your own. Because both of them were young. Yeah. Both of them probably thought their parents would kill them. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, it's, it's, really, it's, really, it's, it's really sad to listen. But let me hear your own thoughts on this. Well, I am grateful for my... I always talk about my relationship with my dad. My, my mom was threatened from 12 
opposite it was constant threats. Don't try it. <laughs> don't even dare it. As in, don't come home safe. In fact, try it first. You will stop school, you will sit with that child, you will live with the consequence of it. So early in life, I always calculated whatever risk I took. I kept the friends that I thought would, you know, fall in line with the rules at home. I kept, you know, the kind of relationship. I don't miss all those things. I just, just know that mm. if those consequences were, how will I deal with them? But I had a good relationship with my dad where we discussed things. I remember when I had that first time a classmate come to my house for school notes and it was a boy and my father just called me and said, ah, you know you're a fine girl, my girl, ah, you're a very fine girl. Can we talk? And then I had a talk about how boyfriends and all those things don't work. They don't mix well here. Mm. If you take those decisions, this is how they will affect you. Mm. Everything was put out there, straight up. Right. I had mentors, my auntie, you know, people, talk, and that's how I believe it should be done. So talk to your child, let your child be aware of this. When, grow, fast forward, when I later learned about resource factor, those were things I, I, thank, I could thank God for. Because I remember I lost a classmate in SS1 to abortion. She just, you know, just like that. Growing up, I met friends who would do these things normally. I see abortion as a choice. It's not something that whether you, you talk to a child about, the child would avoid. Whether you're there or not, if the child has to, like this one, this is a 20-year-old girl. She just thought this was the best decision for her. This is not about whether her parents would accept her hands open. Mm. I know mothers who will cry to their daughters that, please, don't even try. A friend of mine was her own, mother's only child, and she was considering abortion. Mm. But fortunately, friends around her quickly let the mother know that, ah, this is the next step. But she's pregnant, that's why she's not coming home. She's trying to abort it. Right. So she had a good friend system. She had a friend system. So her mom was the one who went to school and said, please, give me the child. Mm. Come and give me this child. You are my only child. Mm. And that's how she got married early no, and had so several I, I children. I saw a quote recently mom. that really got me that the way we, we were raised, oh, I think it was Alibaba that posted it, said, oh, the, oh, I'm trying to remember the quote, it says the way we were raised is different from the way we were raising our children. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, we cannot train our children the way we were raised because the way we were, the world we were raised in no longer is, exists. Mm -hmm. So don't raise your children the way you were raised because the, the world you were raised for doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. You need to study and see where we New are. World. And know that's how you need to raise your children to be able to adapt. Because the truth is that we were raised with threats. Mm -hmm. Raised with, don't do this, ah. no sex. But the truth is, they are in a world that that activity is no more such a sacred activity. Although it's still sacred for us, as especially as a Christian. But at the same time, we must come to that reality that this thing is out there, it's well, you happening. You can make it. I think you can make it sacred. You can make it, it, you but can make it. No, you can't your just, child's life. You, sorry, YK, the way you talk to your child. At the time, yeah, I went to school. My friends were in secondary school were being pimped. That's my own reality, and it's not new what, right. uh, what people are. It's not different. But I, I lived in a world where when we come home, we're allowed to talk about it. I'll be like, ah, this mm. is what uh, my friend invited me for such, uh, this kind of hangout. And my parents would be like, no, those things happen, but this is not you. My mom used to make it like, every sex partner is a covenant you enter. Mm. So that's the way I see it. Right. There's only one person I want to do that covenant with. Mm. And Let you me get away. Like, I'm, just, I'm just talking about the way, you're saying the way we were raised. And you know, it's the times that have changed. Mm. The, this day and age, children have access to things that we never had. Yes. In our day, it's only rich people that had telephone. Mm. Ordinary people would not have telephone. We would not have telephone in our house. Mm. Now, everybody has access to mm. the internet. Just get 100 naira data. Mm. That's it. That's the world is your oyster. Totally. So you have to think of that. And then, so because if you just tell your child, just don't. Let me look, look at you. Don't you work. I be, mm. this woman is. Yeah. Going haywire. You Let know, so she's going to go to her friends. Mm. Talk, take your phone call first. Esther, thanks for calling. Are you there? Go to her friends. Mm. Talk, take your phone call first. Esther, thanks for calling. Are you there? I'm here, ma. Good morning, Go ma. ahead, please. Go ahead, please. I'm the first time caller. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, ma. Ma, I want to talk about um, the student who died in the boyfriend's yes. house. Yes, go ahead. Personally, growing up, I was raised by an Italian for woman who would tell me, don't <laughs> do this, don't do that. <laughs> If you try me, if you do that. And then growing up, I was able to create a relationship with my father. My father would, my father would want to know, well, you know, have a conversation with the children. You can talk to me. You can do this. So we got closer to our father. I remember when my sister got a letter from a boy in school. <laughs> she brought it home, took it to my father. And, you know, my father was able to address her and all that. You find out that parents of these days, they don't get close to their children. You scare the child away. Okay. You push the child in the hands of a stranger. Mm. So when so, such a child has an issue, they don't come to you. Mm. They pick whatever option is available to them. 
And in the end, you find that you're ruining their life. Why not talk to your children? Give them options to become. Growing up, I, I, I told myself, okay, my parents lost me so much. My dad would always support me. Why can't I just pick the right choices? Mm. I lost them growing up. And today, mm. I'm proud of myself. Fantastic. They are not there with me, but Fantastic. yes. I'm Thank you so much for that I insight. Need. Uh, because you see also the importance of fathers, mm -hmm. fathers and their daughters. Mm -hmm. Yes, mothers are given, but when the father is no, close, but, yeah, her, to... mom, her mom, she's a circle, I'm a circle as well. So <laughs> I think it's an a circle woman thing to threaten our children. I'm uh, sad. I find it sad that are I'm you, almost yes. like that now. Don't threaten your child. You are. Yeah. She is like that. I'm yeah. like that. Yeah. She's always, I, I, when, if I'm talking to her on the phone and uh, Gufran just does, if I come and give you a knock <laughs> on your head, like, come on. No. Why, why do you want to give her a knock on the head? You know. So maybe it's. But there was another, Mikey, there was my another... mother was not a very strict yeah, person. But if you did something, she would just look at you so disappointedly Aww. that you will feel <laughs> bad. <laughs> she will I not shout that. at you. She just know, ah, so that. you did this. Oh, ah. yeah, you yourself, you want to go and do ah, yourself. You want to re, 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 <laughs> rewind. rewind. <laughs> ah, so my mother was not a screaming mother. So well, I, I think I, that disappointment. Mm. Well, okay, I had a, I, I had an example. So, well, 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 watching one of this, somebody's Instagram live, a lady made a, an illustration that really got to me. She said that when we were growing up, we had walls. You know, just remember the four corners of the house. Mm -hmm. You are in the middle, and those walls protect you. So that wall was, was is made up of your, your parents, community, values, culture. Mm -hmm. Today, those walls are down. Your child is alone. There's that, that four corner is no more there. It's just your child and the world access. So you as a parent, you can't keep acting as if those walls are there. You must also be part of the world. Know what is going on here. So as that child is getting that information, they know that you are still that person that can be their pillar of support. So if you have that in mind as a parent, you continually... There's also this you, angle of, support of children child. going through difficult um, uh, parents, um, broken homes. So you, if, if a child whose father rejected as a young girl would scream for love, she would pick it in all the wrong places. And those are usually victims. Growing up, those were the major, you know, right. examples we saw growing up. For amongst and and I, I think we used to, as a community, Nigerians, Africans, as a, we always looked out for our neighbors' children. Mm -hmm. That has because now when you talk about these walls, I let even bring it to reality. When I was growing up, the walls were low. Mm. You, every, every you could see into every house. Yes. Now everybody has their walls yeah, high. You can't see into another person's mm -hmm. house. So it, you can't see your neighbor's friend smoking. Mm. Your neighbor's son, I mean, smoking yes, or yes, daughter. Of course. And you don't. Eh, you will first give him a hot slap. Boss, <laughs> who gave you that secret <laughs> before you go and report to the father, yeah. to the father or the mm. mother? Mm. But I remember when I the, um, on a tour, I went to France. Mm. I went to France and I saw this child smoking. And we're like, eh, you know, someone. Don't try it. You are in France, so don't go and meet him smoking. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's in Nigeria, you can do that one. Because you, you will not accept it yeah. in Nigeria, yeah. seeing a child, a 12 year old. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up on this, but it's something that is important that we continue to talk about these things mm -hmm. to help parents out there know that, listen, the rules are different. You must be help part of your child's growing up because when they make mistakes, you want them to come to you because nobody is perfect. Even you as a parent mm -hmm. are not perfect. So when children make mistakes, youngsters, even if they are young adults, let them be able to come to you. At least you can guide them. So this young lady that died would may not have died if her parents had been a support system for her. We have to go on a break. Um, it's COVID-19 is still out there. I don't want us to act like it's not there. So when we go on a break, when we come back, we discuss this updates from WHO with the DG of NAFDAQ and the possible remedies that they're working on. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. I'm here. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot hear you very well, please. Our technical oh, guys will help us with that. The lack of fees, though, she's having issues. She okay, can't hear good. us very well. Right. Thanks for staying with us. So the World Health Organization, WHO, announced that it has suspended the use of hydroxychloroquine in solidarity trial for the treatment of COVID-19. According to reports, the drug trial was suspended on grounds of safety concern following a report that more people are dying from the use um, of, the, uh, of, of this drug. Now, joining us on the show to discuss this again is the Director General of NAFDAQ, 
Dr. Mujisola Adeye. Welcome, madam. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Good to have you back. So, WHO Thanks. came up with this uh, report saying that hydroxychloroquine has been suspended as trials for now. How do you respond to this? What's, what are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, I do not know the data that they are looking at, uh, whether it is from the Caucasian population or from the African population. I know that uh, the data or the clinical trial treatment uh, is about to start. Actually, maybe it has started just a few days ago in Lagos. Um, so when you talk, when you do clinical trial treatment, there are many factors that can affect the clinical outcomes. Uh, the way drug is handled, even from children of the same mother, may be different. Hmm. Not to talk of populations. Uh, so if the data they are looking at and the reason for suspending the trials is because it, or is from a Caucasian population, then it may be justified. But I don't think that we have data from the African population yet uh, because our genetic makeup is different. You can take, for example, uh, drugs used for hypertension. There are some drugs that will work for the African-American or African population that will not work for uh, the Caucasian population. So uh, that may be the reason. But when you are doing uh, science experiment or clinical trial, you wait for the data. Right. Once we start getting our own data in Africa, then we can, you know, it may go one way or the other. Right. But uh, right. I don't dispute what the WHO right. uh, okay. conclusion we, 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 yeah. This morning, I'm sorry, yesterday we had over 8,000 cases of um, COVID in um, Nigeria, would you say that this drug confirm if it's been used and it's, uh, will you say it's working for us, the number of um, you know, cures that we've had? Well, you see, uh, there are three stages of uh, COVID-19 disease. Uh, because it's a new virus, as we speak, things are evolving. Things are evolving, meaning new information is coming out almost every day. Now we know that there are three stages of the disease, the early stage, the mild stage, and the severe stage. Very, very likely, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine will work at the initial stage and to the mild, you know, also partly mild stage. So it depends also on the severity of the disease when it was given to the group of patients. If it is a severe case, when it becomes severe, the body is overwhelmed by what is called the pro-inflammatory proteins. Uh, these are proteins that, are, that will show up when something drastic is happening to a human being. At that point, chloroquine may not work. Again, I don't have data to prove that. But there is data to prove that chloroquine worked for many patients that have COVID-19. It is based on research. It is now whether those patients actually were at the early to mild stage. Right. Okay. So, th that, so means that is factors that can affect the outcomes. Right. So that means Ma, that it, it, even though the, who have said... WHO have said they're not um, using, they've suspended the use. Nigeria, we will continue our own clinical trials. Is that, in effect, what you're saying? Yes, now? That is, that's my understanding right now. Yes, okay. that's right. my understanding right now. One thing I'd like to ask you, Ma. Um, the numbers in Africa obviously have shocked everybody, have shocked the world. Yes, we know our testing is not as fast as it is in the, in the, in the West, but people, they, people projected that by now we'll have over, over a million cases. And the whole of West Africa is doing about 24,000. The point is that, do you think that Africa as a whole should begin to come up with their own WHO side of, not, not World Health, but a, a kind of health organization to see how we can actually have internal trials within our own continent? Because obviously, our genes are different from the Caucasian genes. So maybe we can find a different solution, totally different from the WHO's path. 
What do you think, Ma? Actually, your, your point is well taken. Uh, first, uh, well, I made a comment about uh, genetic factor and that our own clinical trials uh, data will point out uh, the truth about this science. Science will not lie if it is well designed, uh, the experiment is well designed. But you are absolutely right that our own body composition or makeup might have influenced the way we are even reacting to this uh, COVID-19. Uh, our history, maybe the vaccinations that we had in early childhood, we don't know. Uh, it may be weather, we don't know. Uh, but science will prove itself. And this is what uh, the clinical trial in Africa is going to do. We have the solidarity trial in Africa going on. Uh, and uh, oh, in many countries, they've already started. But in Nigeria, we're about to start. So the, the, the data will prove itself. Right, we we right. show what exactly is happening. Right. Yes. Ma, can, can you give us details of the 19 pharma uh, pharmaceutical companies invited to to test um, drugs in Nigeria. This morning, the paper carried about 19 of, uh, 10 or 19, 19 of them. 19, right? Ministry of, of the Health. Ministry yeah. of Health invited them to, to carry out uh, test drugs for COVID. 19 pharmaceutical, maybe, maybe herbal medicine. Herbal, right. it wasn't pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. it was herbal. I was at the meeting last week. Uh, we were at a meeting last week, rather, where the ministry invited uh, about that number, that figure, I couldn't figure it out when we were at the Zoom meeting, then I, I couldn't figure out the number, but it's about that number. Right. Uh, they invited them to come and present what they think could help with COVID. And it was a great, great meeting. Uh, and I will not be surprised if we get something promising. Mm. Uh, among the 19, that doesn't mean that all the 19. But look, uh, this is a this is a, a research uh, dream, or I will call it research dream. And I believe that we're going to achieve something out of it. So it is 19 herbal practitioners oh, that fantastic. were invited last. We're excited about it too. Yes. Um, I'll go on a quick break. We'll come back after the we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us, Ma. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. We still have with us the DG NAFDAQ, uh, Dr. Mujisala Adie. Uh, Waiki had a question before we went on break. Yes, Mike. I wanted to find out from you if um, the drug from Madagascar has started undergoing tests because so, some of the papers, I can't remember if it was papers or social media that have been saying the drug has not been they haven't started tests on the drug. So I wanted to ask if you have the drug in your possession and if st tests have started. Uh, uh, NAPDAC doesn't have the drug in its possession and we are still waiting uh, to receive the medicine. But uh, as soon as uh, we get it, we're going to start the uh, evaluation or the testing uh, and we will expedite uh, the, the testing. But we don't have it yet. Thank you, ma'am. Now, one of the issues we've had is the testing kits. They are so expensive. Uh, we're told, I think Lagos State was saying that they're spending between either thousand. thirty to 40000 mm -hmm. per kit. Um, is NAFTA looking at local production of some kind of testing kits we can use within the, the shores of our country that would actually achieve better results or even the same results? Unfortunately, right now, we don't. Okay. Uh, the testing kits... Uh, are expensive, and that is what happens to a country that depends too much on others to produce things for them. Uh, it's not like we cannot do it, it's just like we were not focused. Uh, and the COVID again is making us to refocus and to understand that we can do this on our own. Uh, in fact, we are working with a Nigerian, a company that was um, started by a Nigerian, or you know, or that is owned rather by a Nigerian, uh, who makes testing kits. But unfortunately, that company or that person is outside the country. 
in another in another country. So we are trying uh, as much as possible to get uh, some of uh, the testing kits from his company to be validated in Nigeria. And if uh, if everything goes well, this company may actually turn things around for us. Right. Okay. Let me take that. It's headed. Right. It's, it's, I have a call. Yes. Uh, uh, Yakub, are you there? Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Mariah, good yes. morning. Good morning. Uh, because of time, quickly, let me just go. Good morning to Paul. Uh, Mariah, uh, this is kind of a story that we, we in Nigeria need to be listening to because I heard the prophecies that uh, the apps uh, people gathering last time, maybe 19 of them, and then she was telling us that there's the probability of seeing something promising because what we are looking for now is cure. And then about the African thing, Sister Yeni, just take it out of my mouth. You see, this Madagascar COVID organic. Morayo, the question that I was expecting you to ask the prof is that Nigerian government, this is, this is a government that I really, really campaigned and voted for. Morayo, is, why is it that the COVID organic still remains? In, uh, in, in Asorok up to, up to today. I don't know get to the NAVDAC uh, DG. I really give to, kudos to NAVDAC uh, DG mm -hmm. because the woman always say the truth the way it is. Even though the, some of people in the government they don't like the way the woman talks, I can tell you that because if it's from other people, if you tell you that you all will just leave it like that. The, the woman just said the way it is that it is not yet getting. Why? We are in Africa. We need to know what is going on. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you very much, Jacob. So, is it, is, it, is it the old red tape bureaucracy mm. that is the bureaucratic process that is not letting that organic? We thought that by now, the NAVDAC should have had it. I mean, why? What the delays? We don't know, but hey, we'll find out from the Minister of Health. But uh, let me get your question, um, Nima. Ma, I hope you heard the compliment she gave you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. We're that trying you are, hard in we, we, we love you because you. you don't you don't mix, mix the truth with anything. You just say it as it is. <laughs> Go ahead, Thank you so much. Thank so, you. But this raises concern for me because I had thought that the Madagascar uh, whatever was COVID or organic organic was you know available for um, clinical testing already. We had read that you know this we received the DG. Um, NCDC had addressed us on it. The, the entire presidential task force had talked about this for weeks. I would expect that we're already either doing something with it or that, you know, for certain, NAVDAC has it. If you say you don't have it, what exactly are they relying on as a country that, you know, that we were, we're open on? Now that WHO is saying hydrochloric, uh, hydraulic, hydroxychloroquine hydrochloroquine is a problem. What exactly is that form of treatment? What is the standard of treatment that we have now to manage COVID patients in our isolation centers across the nation? Well, uh, the tests or the medicines that are being given to uh, patients in the isolation center are chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine. Uh, and you have had testimonies of different dignitaries uh, Bauchi State Governor, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Bukupe. Uh, there is somebody, uh, yeah, um, the president or the MD of uh, AIT. Uh, they said that they were given anti malaria and they went in positive and came out negative. So something must have happened. The anti malaria might have, must have, must have turned their positive. Uh, status yes. to negative. Hmm. So that is the standard of care that I understand hmm. uh, is taking hmm. place right. or is being given in the different centers. Right. Ma, do you think, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of us have built immunity against malaria mm -hmm. um, over the years because we, we had it so many times or we got, we, yes. like me, I took a drug, my father gave me a drug when I was 19 and I haven't okay. had malaria okay. since. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will can kind of make you um, immune? immune to COVID-19. COVID do, do you think you have, you know, we, we could have built our immunity? <laughs> that is such a good scientific hypothesis. <laughs> uh, because an hypothesis is what you Still. think may be the solution to a particular problem. It may be, it may not be. And that is why 
we need more science to this COVID-19 organic, uh, excuse me, COVID-19 disease, sorry. Um, it may be, uh, we don't know, we just don't know. Uh, some people have said that, oh, is it because of the BCG that many of us took, in, most of us actually, uh, took when we were young? We don't know. This is an area of research and it's very interesting to me. Right. Uh, but since COVID, you know, it just came up six months ago, roughly six months ago, there's a lot of interesting things mm. to discover. We, we I'm have, just we praying. Have to... We have to wrap up, but I know this is obviously an interesting time for people like you. Our professors are researching. You're, you're excited about the prospects, you know, to get new information. The world is waiting. Um, time frame. Yes. I asked you the last time again. Timelines. What can we, what should we be looking forward to? Four months, five months, one year. What, because Nigerians are excited that you're talking to our people. We're, we're happy about that. But when do we see a possible drug that can prevent or um, cure. cure this um, COVID-19 virus? Actually, uh, the clinical trial treatment that is going on now, uh, and it has been turned to a network of trials, you know, a solidarity trial, it is called UHO, uh, where other uh, states, uh, Ogun State, Kano, Kaduna, you know, uh, will also be funneling their data to a center Try, uh, clinical trial center. I don't know which one they're going to use uh, as clinical trial center, but in about three to four months, we may be talking completely different, or uh, using completely different language. Okay. If, for example, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine happens to have worked, then we know that we can use chloroquine. But until then, we don't know. Uh, the Another one that we, or another area we should be looking at is the herbal medicine. Uh, I mentioned that we had this meeting last week. Uh, there may be prospects. So once the government gives a go ahead uh, in terms of funding, because clinical trial is expensive, it's an expensive thing. And then you have to be able to get the patients. That's another issue. So working together, we can do that. There is nothing we cannot do if we work together, the medical doctors, the the research scientists, right. the pharmacists, nurses, and so on. Uh, right. we, before we can get data from that, will not be less than four months right. uh, if we start right. today. Right. You know, so uh, right. it is the outcome of what we are doing right now that we determine mm. uh, Thank you so the much, conclusion. Ma. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's, good. it's always speak. good to join you. <laughs> Thank you, ma. Thank you. We'll be speaking with the DG Dr. Mujizaba Adeyeye. That's all we can take. I know lots of people sending tweets at the previous topic. Do you have any tweets you want to take? Yes, or very yeah, quickly. That, Just a few minutes. Take that's a few minutes. Matilda says, my opinion of the, on this case is a bit different. What if the girl is not being harsh to by her parents, but giving total freedom, or they care less about her whereabouts or well-being? How can a 20-year-old girl not report to her parents' house, but to her boyfriend's house for months and not being checked to? So because our show is five minutes delayed, the tweets come in a bit different, a yes. bit late. So that's why I was giving the time to take a few. Why can you have one you want to take? No, I was not going to. I was going to talk about the, the um, um, NAFDAQ lady. I think that I, I respect the fact that she actually wants to check herbal medicine. I, she's excited that herbal it. medicine might work. I think that is very different from the... A, a lot of doctors that I know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not going to mention one doctor. When I went on one radio show and I was saying, ah, can you come have a medicine? So I later called him, say, ah, my cousin, she has a gout and I need that drug. When you go and use Dogo Yaro now. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all we can take on the show today, but thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a fabulous day. Bye for now. <laughs>